there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting. I'm Nicole and this is episode 49. Since I last recorded, I went to the Rosie Yarn Crawl, and if you're interested, I have a vlog about that, and I'll have that linked below in the description box, as I'll have everything I'll talk about today linked below. And at the end of the Rosie Yarn Crawl, I ended up having a work trip to Ecuador. I went to Quito, Ecuador, and I'm back. <laughs> My trip to Ecuador has nothing to do with knitting, and so I will share about that in the personal section if you're interested, which is at the end of the episode and I'll have some video footage at the end too. But today, right now, I feel like talking about knitting. I live in the Pacific Northwest of the United States in Oregon and I'm a math education professor and the weather here has been just so delightful. It's been sunny. It's felt like summer. It's been in the 70s Fahrenheit. Um, it just has me like so excited about spring and summer and I think it's really apropos because as you'll see today I'm going to share a lot of green knitting. It's like spring is on my heart and my hands with knitting and so yeah I, I, I don't know what I'm going to name this episode at this point but I wouldn't be surprised if I like make the title green's my favorite color because I like pink. I'm wearing a pink sweater right now well, it's kind of like a dusty pink, but this is the Diaphanous Raglan by Jesse Made Designs. This is a single mohair and these kind of like balloon or bishop sleeves. And then the cuffs are single and mohair held together and the body single and mohair held together. I have so many pink sweaters. Pink is my favorite color to knit with but you would not know that this episode, so much green. So let's hop into it. I'll share a finished object and a bunch of green whips. <laughs> Okay, my first finished object since I last recorded is a Musselberg hat. I finished it. I was working on it the last time I recorded and I'm done with it. I, of course, I chose where I had been today. <laughs> I'll try this on for you. Okay. So, yeah, I like to wear them like this with the brim folded, but you don't have to wear them this way. You can also wear them unfolded. If you've knit in Musselberg, tell me how you wear it. Do you wear it folded or unfolded? Or do you wear it both ways? I, I imagine some people probably wear it both ways. I, I mean, this... I'm not against the Sashi hat. I just really like it folded a lot. So this yarn is really pretty. It's purple and pink tonals. And then there's these like neon blips. And in person, it nearly glows. I, I feels like I haven't tried it under black light, but it feels like the kind of hat that if you wore it under black light, it would be really cool. So I knit the size small, so I think it's an adult size small, a child size large, and I planned on using my entire skein. That was like what I wanted to do is just use up my whole skein of yarn and not have any leftovers, but the hat was reaching like, I don't know, 21, 22 inches, I forget, but it was like getting really, really long and I still had a lot of yarn left and it was just right to decrease. And I mean, it's pretty tall, as you can see, even with it folded. So I'm glad I stopped when I did. And I love the fit of it. I flocked it, it's super cute. So some details about this hat is you can start it however you want. Like you can use a pinhole cast on. Some people just will cast on eight stitches and weave it in later, kind of close the hole later. I like the disappearing loop cast on. Um, it is a little bit more work than just casting on eight stitches, but I, I really like the way it looks. And yeah, so I did the disappearing loop cast on. 
I went for at least 21 and a half or 22 inches in length from the tip to the other side here. So you can see it makes a giant bean. And then I did the decreases. And this was my third Musselberg. I know some people have made so many of these. Uh, I, my first one I made out of an 85-15 base, so 85 superwash merino, 15% nylon, very plump base. Doesn't have as much yardage, and was, that kind of fingering is much, it feels a little thicker. And I really like that one a lot. And I wore it quite a bit, and inspired me to make more. And then I made one for my daughter Matilda, who's in kindergarten, and I did that one out of, I don't know the percentage, but it, it was a super wash, super wash merino with a Stellina. And so it was kind of sparkle. That was so cute, she loves it. So this third one was my first time doing a Musselberg in a 75-25 base. And out of those three Musselbergs, I think I like the 75-25 base for a couple reasons. One is it was just almost like thinner it felt thinner. 75-25 just feels thinner than an 85-20 or 85-15 or an 80-20 to me. And since this is a double thick hat, like I actually just like wearing it more. It just feels less thick. I don't know. I mean, you're, I, I know people make these out of DK. I, I would like to try at one point, but I just think the part of me that thinks like that will just be way too thick. For where I live in the Pacific Northwest, this kind of like a double thick hat like i don't need it that much um I, we'd certainly need hats out here i live south of portland oregon like we certainly need hats for sure but it, it's not like i'm from the midwest it's not that same kind of cold and so the it seems so wild to me to say that i think a 75 25 base makes that big of a difference between 80 20 but i don't know knitters we have little quirks anyway all that to say is i think Moving forward, I would prefer to make a Musselberg out of a 75-25. That being said, I already have some yarn set aside to make my husband a Musselberg, and I think it's an 80-20, so I think he's gonna get kind of a thicker hat. <laughs> so anyway, love those. I wanna make another one. I don't have it on the needles now, and you'll see why. I wanted something that was like a Musselberg to knit, like round and round and round easy but I wanted more of a spring project. So that's what's on the needles now and you'll see that in a little bit. Since I last recorded, I've worked on four knitting projects and I'm gonna share those with you. Of those four knitting projects, two of them are very, very green <laughs> and the other two have little blips of green in them. Okay, so my first project that has like consume the most amount of time is the heirloom quilt cardigan and I have been working on this for a while. I started this in December with my Chelsea Lux or Chelsea Yarns advent. I got a sparkle base advent and I just wanted to do this heirloom cardigan. I have to make 27 rectangles and I've since I last recorded I've knit seven rectangles, seven more rectangles. So that makes my total 23 rectangles out of 27. So I am only four rectangles away from completing all the rectangles for this heirloom cardigan. And so here's one, this peach color, and then this is fun. It almost looks like a gray base here in the camera, but in person it's more lavender. And there's all these speckles I don't know if it's showing up to you. It doesn't look like it, but this is Sparkle and Sparkle. If you have been watching this channel for a bit, you've heard me talk about it. That one mini skein holding the yarn double makes both the star, the inside, and also a background. So that's kind of my flow is I will use a mini skein to make the star and then the background. And so there's two. Here's another one where I used the mini skein as the center and the mini skein as the background. So these are both sparkle bases, this red and this kind of pink with like the flex on it. 
I have been mixing, sometimes not using a sparkle base because I have these, I bought from Chelsea Yarns these 80, I think it's an 80, 20 base to do these kind of sleeves and I'm going to do them in two different colors. And I wanted to incorporate some of those colors into the quilt as well. And so here's an example of me using a sparkle base and then a non-sparkle base as the star. Yeah, so I'm mixing my bases here and <laughs> it's gonna be just a wild quilt cardigan. This one is interesting. I, when I went to Ecuador, I packed some mini skeins to work on these and this is like a yellowy creamy with like pinks in it. And so I had intended to do a pink color. I intended to do this pink on that kind of yellow, but I was a little bit of chaos at the airport. Like when I, I'm a little bit of chaos when I travel and I didn't actually like look in my bag to see what I packed. So in my head, when I packed a new, my color combos and in reality, I just ended up grabbing something. And after I did it, I realized, oops, I don't think I meant to do this. So, so yeah, I think I meant for the orange and this blue to go together and then this kind of purpley pink to go with this, but that's not what I did. It still turned out okay. And then the last one I did is this. I love this blue. I think on my other, one of the rectangles, I paired this blue with a pink for kind of a 90s looking style, but I think this color was called like taxi cab or something. The Chelsea Yarns advent was a New York theme and I don't remember all the names and I won't remember all the names. I've lost track of them. So I made seven. I'm so proud of myself for persevering through this. So it's possible the next time that I record this, I mean, I don't know, maybe. It's possible the next time I record an episode, I would have all the rectangles complete. I'm not claiming these things will be sewn. <laughs> I, like, they probably won't be. Okay, so my routine is I try to use up a mini skein. And when I use up the mini skein, what ends up happening is there's about five grams left over and then I wind it up into a little mini ball. Like here's the blue that I had just finished. I showed on one of the rectangles. And so then I wind up the remaining five grams and then I'm putting them in this jar. And so I have this jar of all these precious little five grams that like I've used up. And so I only have four more rectangles to go and I've used up, I haven't used up all of the yarn, but I have used almost all the mini skeins. So this is sort of my big bag that I've been keeping the heirloom quilt materials in, like the pattern, the needle, the name of the colorways. So, so far there's only three colors I haven't used that are in the advent. There's three colors in the advent that haven't made it into my cardigan yet. And I want to have all the colors in my advent. So I have four rectangles left and these four colors will make an appearance. So I've also been thinking about color balance. So most of the rectangles I've just completed have a lighter color background and a darker color star and I've been sorting them out. And so I have more of those that are, I have more rectangles that are light colored with a dark middle. So for my remaining four squares, my attempt would be to have a darker background and a lighter star. So I don't think I'm putting these two together, but like if I was, this would be the background and this would be the star. And so it feels so good to be like reaching a point of progress on this where it's like I can say all the rectangles are complete. I've been blocking the rectangles as I go and I've been leaving like a long tail with the rectangles so I can sew them. I am hopeful I will sew them because I really really want this. I think if I put the rectangles away and just pause on this and don't set like little goals for every episode or I've been having Zoom sessions with some friends, um, 
I don't, I think if I don't set a goal to sew, the, sew these or something that I am the personality to like, just kind of move on and like let it languish. And I want to finish this Advent project before next year. Ideally, I would like this entire Advent project to be done sometime in the summer. So I have this really cool heirloom quilt cardigan to wear in the fall. And I think that that's a very doable goal. I feel like once I get all the rectangles sewn together, like picking up the stitches for the sleeves will be exciting, hopefully. So let me know if you have precious scraps because this advent, I've like gotten my use out of it. Like I'm making these rectangles for this cardigan, but I'm like hoarding the leftovers of this kind of scrappy cardigan in this jar, like precious, like, like, like this is their special jar. And my intent is to, when the whole heirloom quilt is done is to put all the little scraps in here and then make a magic knot ball. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Let me know if you've made a magic knot ball and if you have suggestions on making a magic knot ball. I know that some people make a magic knot ball and then start beautiful blankets and things like this. I don't see myself being a blanket maker, so I don't think that's what I'd like to do with it. I'd like to maybe make either a garment or a shawl of some kind. So yeah, if you've made a magic knot ball, let me know, give me advice. If you like have precious scraps like this, what kinds of things do you make? Okay. Since I last recorded, this is one of the green things I've been obsessed with. <laughs> so I'll share more about this in a second. I am co-hosting a boucle make along with Emily from the Botanical Knitter. She is on YouTube and on Instagram and we oh, a while ago we decided that we were gonna host a make along with boucle yarn and the intent was to use boucle yarn that we already had and i think that's what she did <laughs> i ended up buying more boucle yarn <laughs> so this is valley yarns from chester in this color lime it's super bulky and I've been working on a sweater. Now this sweater, I thought I would just cruise really quickly along on. It's been kind of slow, but worth it. <laughs> so this is the Samal sweater and it is going to be an oversized quarter zip. It is made top down, drop shoulder design and it has short row shaping here in the back. And I made some mistakes. I won't get into it all, but I will say if you choose to knit this pattern, message me. <laughs> Just message me. And I'll tell you about my mistakes at length and some tips and things. But essentially, I didn't measure the back right. And so when I knit the front pieces and needed to connect them in the round, it wasn't quite right. So I had to go back in the back and kind of add some things. It's good now, I've tried it on, it looks really good. It's pretty oversized as you, as you can see, it's a giant. And this will be where the zipper is. I'll add a collar on, I'll need to add a zipper in. And I'm going round and round. So some fun details about this. One is I'm using my new progress keeper I just got that is a pink dragon from Charmed and Dangerous. I set my alarm to get this. I love Charmed and Dangerous charms and she had dragons. And the first time she had dragons, I missed out on them. It was really sad. And then the second, the second update, she had a hot pink dragon. And so I'm just loving this because I my new favorite color is green. I have a hot pink dragon. I ended up picking out two of these, a pink dragon and a black dragon, but Matilda took the black dragon and I got the black dragon because of my favorite book series, Fourth Wing. And then I got the pink dragon because I thought if I had a dragon, it would be hot pink. <laughs> anyway, I'm going on about the progress keeper. Back to the sweater. So when I last recorded, I hadn't connected in the round yet. 
and so this progress keeper doesn't represent how much I've knit since I recorded, which is what I typically do. This is actually how much I've knit since I got back from Ecuador, which was this weekend. So I feel like I've I felt like I've worked on it a lot, but I just knit so slow with super bulky yarn. I've knit other super bulky sweaters, and then I think I just knit really slow with super bulky yarn for some reason. And yeah, so I was knitting the pieces flat, and on the last time I I recorded, I showed my needles, and they were kind of falling apart. I've used nitpick needles, and I have had my nitpick needles since my 20s, and I'm 40 now, so I mean, they've lived a life. They've been good needles, but Dora, who is a viewer of the, of the channel, she um, and I had been emailing, and I mean, she generously offered to send me needle tips, and... It was so kind and so she sent them right away and as soon as they came i switched them out so these are the needles that dora sent and they are in good condition <laughs> it's interesting they're actually a slightly different shape tip wise and bottom and slightly different length than mine and i think that's just because mine are so old and like obviously somewhere in the last 15 years maybe they've changed their manufacturing who knows she also sent me little ones for the sleeves. So that was so generous and it just, so this makes, what I'm getting at is this is feeling like a friendship sweater to me because Shayla from Black Pearl Magic, she's knitting one of these too. And that felt like kind of a, our own mini knit along and it felt like a friendship aspect. And then Dora sent me needles to finish this, which felt like a friend helping me finish this. And then, to make it even feel more like a friendship sweater. Where is it? Uh, my friend Emily, green is actually her favorite color. Like pink is my favorite color, green is her favorite color. I'm like a green imposter right now with my green. <laughs> but she has so much green yarn, she offered to send me some green yarn to match my sweater because the pattern uses fingering on the cups and on the bottom and yeah so emily was messaging me and she sent me this yarn and i like almost fell over i gasped like i was like is this real like just from us messaging back and forth and sending pictures she ends up sending like the most perfect green so this green is from teal torch knits ironically from Portland, Oregon. So the yarn was here, it went and lived in Minnesota for a while, and then it <laughs> came back to Oregon. <laughs> uh, this label is just phenomenal. It's iridescent. This is my second skein of Teal Torch Knits, and I haven't knit with it yet, but I'm really excited. And there's these kind of like darker speckling. This colorway is called Reckless Toad, and it's a 7525. So it says 75 superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. So yeah, I'm just really excited. I don't know if I'm going to do this on the bottom. I have a three quarters of pullover for work that I have that I wear. And it has, it's like an actual sweatshirt and it has the ribbing at the bottom that kind of cinches in. And I think it looks nice. But Shayla was talking about how she was gonna do it cropped and maybe not have ruby at the bottom. And now that's kind of in my head as an option. So I think what I'm gonna do is like knit it to a cropped length, try it on and see if I would like it to just end that way. And then I would just do this for the cuffs. But I have, since Emily sent me the whole skein, I have enough to do the bottom as well. So something to think about. Yeah, so I'm to the easy part now. I'm just like round and round. But yeah, I worked on it for at least two or three hours yesterday and I only made it that far. So I'm just a slow, super bulky knitter. So I think with my heirloom cardigan, I'm nervous about sewing. Like, will I sew the rectangles together? With this, I'm nervous about the zipper. I'm... I've never put a zipper in my knitting and I'm scared to do it. I'm scared. I like, I, 
it's gonna be a hurdle. I don't even have the zipper for it yet. So like any suggestions that you have about zippers and knitting or any encouragement you have, let me know. Let me know if you put a zipper in any of your knitting or crochet. Let me know how it went. Did you do it? use any resources? Where did you buy your zippers? Just tell me the things. <laughs> okay, speaking of boucle and zippers, since I last recorded, I worked on my teddy belt bag by Joan Ho. An itty bitty amount. It's almost like silly to show it because of how little I worked on it, but I'm gonna show it because I'm proud that I worked on it <laughs> at all. It's like almost like accountability a little bit here. So about a year ago, I bought some yarn, some boucle yarn, and I knit the pieces to make a belt bag, the teddy belt bag. It's so cute, but it required sewing. And then I put all these pieces in this bag. I want this bag back too to use, it's cute. <laughs> this is a knitter's backpack from Ritual Dyes. So last episode, I was like, look, I sewed one of the pieces on. And now I can say, look, I sewed the second piece on. So it's starting to look like a belt bag. And it's, I've, I think the pattern's written for like a super bulky clay like this. So this would be really good to buy if you're gonna make a belt bag, I think. However, I did this with holding two strands of boucle double with a strand of worsted and a strand of sparkle. So it created this kind of thick yarn. So there's a lot to weave in still. There's this base here that's made out of double knitting. And anyway, I've sewed the two sides together. So next up is these kind of like little lips here. I would sew a zipper like into one of these and into one of these, and then this is where it would zip, zip up together. And then right here, these, this little gap here is where the straps will go. Gonna be such a good size. I absolutely have to have this done for flock, which will be in August. I just, it's a yarn vessel coming up in August. I have to have this done. I feel like this would be, how cool it would be to be at a yarn vessel wearing a knitted bag. August here in the Pacific Northwest can be really hot and it can be hard to wear sweaters. And like, obviously at a yarn vessel, you want to wear sweaters, but it can be hard. So last year I knit a tank top, which was like, I think a really good choice for a yarn vessel in August. And I'll, maybe I'll knit a new tank top again for that, who knows? But I think the idea of like having a knit bag for shopping, 10 out of 10, I needed, and you're probably sitting there thinking, this is easy, just a strap and a zipper, so close. But I'm so scared. <laughs> this is the hurdle. So here's the zipper and I need to put it in here. This is, I think one side goes here. What has me a little nervous is that z the zipper is a little bit longer than the length. So I think what I will do is do pin it in do my best and sew it in. And then make sure it zips shut. And when all that is perfect and done, then if I wanna cut the zipper a little bit down, then I will. So I think that's my plan. I'm terrified of the zipper right now. And so that is, if I'm being honest, a major hurdle again. Let me know if you've done anything with zipper and if you have any words of encouragement on that. Boucle make along and this YouTube channel, like these two things are like motivating me because with the boucle make along, it made me like pull this out and I've at least moved a little bit forward with it. And it's nice to have the YouTube channels like a little accountability space of like, here's what I have done so far, even if it's not a lot. The zipper is pretty terrifying to me. So any words of encouragement, welcome. 
I'm glad though that this food clay make along has happened because it made me kind of like dig this whip out and work on it. And I have moved forward. It's not completely standing still, it's moving forward. Okay, while we are chatting about the food clay make along, I just realized that I don't have it near me, but I have, I, I, before we move on, and I show you my last work in progress, I need to show you the prize for the boot clay make along. Well, there's multiple prizes, but I need to show you a prize that arrived that is like the prize of the prizes. Okay, I'm back with an epic prize for the boot clay make along. So Shayla had reached out to me and said that she would be willing to send along some little goodies. That was, <laughs> that was the words she used for the make along. And then, this is what she said. I was not, when, besides his little goodies, I'm not expecting a giant size large Black Pearl Magic bag that's like epic. <laughs> so over the top prize, this is so cool. Yeah, so size large. Look at this zipper, it's so cool. And then it has a handle, but it's in packaging and I'm keeping that on the inside for the winter. So here's the, the handle. Very cute. And then the little goodies are inside of the giant bag, <laughs> which include needle stoppers, keep your stitches from sliding off, doing like a peace sign, things like this. And then these really cute like gummy bears, pink and red, and it all matches this, which is super fun. So yeah, so how can you enter for this prize and our other prizes? Two ways, use the hashtag uh, Boucle Buddies Cozy Mal on Instagram. And Emily and I have just been asking if you could tag us in the post. So that's the Botanical Knitter and me, Prof Pearl. So that's one way to be entered for this prize. And then also on my Ravelry page, there's a thread and there's a finished object thread and you can post your boucle projects there. And there's still lots of time to start a boucle project. I'm actually even going to be talking about starting another boucle project in dream knitting. So there's still time. It goes until April 10th. Yeah. I mean, it's like 20 more days at least of knitting boucle. And so you could get started on something. You could finish something like me. We'd love to have you. Okay. My last work in progress. And this one I've worked on a lot. I, as I mentioned, I went to Ecuador. I had the Rosie yarn crawl. When I've, I've gotten back from these things and mom life, I've had like swim teams, swim lessons, things like this. So this has been sort of my go-to project. So in a black pearl magic bag, green, of course, because green's my new favorite color. Actually, this is, I just was just like drawn to this. I love like the pairing of like nude with a neon. And so this is almost like a beige with these like neon smileys. And I don't know if it's coming up in the, I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but the zipper is not just like plain white. It's like almost this iridescent kind of rainbow zipper. And then mine has a little handle too. Just, this arrived right before I left on my trip for Ecuador. And I think this bag is precious. So I did not bring it with me on my trip. I didn't want it to get smushed in my book bag. I can be like a hard traveler where I'm just like shoving things in. And I think this could definitely, it bends. It could it's durable it could have held it but it was like it's like this precious thing to me so I didn't bring it with me <laughs> and Shayla had included some fun things for me in there which is so sweet like these pink little needle stoppers and I love Disney and this was like combining all my recent loves which is little iridescent pink green and kind of clear iridescent stitch markers or progress keepers that have Mickey and Minnie. Though they're Mickey and Minnie, the Mickey Minnie is a yarn ball, like the circle is a yarn ball. It's way too cute. I'm just, I have one of my project now. Okay. 
the project is a tank top. I've only ever knit one tank top and I'm knitting a second one. I have no idea if I will actually wear this because it's not even gonna be a tank top. It's gonna be a tight tank top. <laughs> so first I knit a tank top last year for the first time. And I didn't know, like I was so nervous to knit it because I didn't know if I'd actually wear it. And so I had a tank top make along to motivate me to do it. And I, and it was great motivation. And I knit the outline tank and I have worn it quite a bit, but it's oversized. This is tight. I don't know if I will wear it, but I wanted something round and round like the Musselberg, but I just didn't want to knit another hat. <laughs> so I'm knitting. So I'm knitting the summer secret crop by Jessie Maid. Like looking back, maybe I should have picked the mini mock neck because that has like thicker straps that, so like, I feel like I would maybe be more apt to wear that. So that's on my list to make a mini mock neck, but that's, that, I think that one's top down. And the summer secret crop, I think I picked it cause it's a free pattern <laughs> and it's bottom up and it has thinner straps. But I think that this yarn is everything. So this is yarn, oh, so this progress keeper is here and this is what I've knit since being back from Ecuador. So as you can see, not a lot of knitting has happened since I've gotten back from Ecuador, but I have made a lot of progress since I last recorded because the last time I had an episode, I didn't have a tank top and now I have inches of a tank top. <laughs> so yeah, this yarn I actually purchased not this past Rosie Yarn Crawl, but the Rosie Yarn Crawl before. So in 2023, I purchased this yarn at Starlight Knitting Society at a trunk show by Wild Star Fibers. And this colorway is called Laser Tag, which is so apropos for it. This is an 8515 base. It is so soft. I did put the cords on just to see how this would fit because kind of nervous about it and so far it's fitting quite nice so yeah bottom up I should have enough yarn to do it I think that that's what was appealing to me about the summer secret crop was free pattern one skinny yarn why not try it and I just feel like this is the perfect tank top yarn it's so bright it's making me think of spring summer Maybe I'll style it under a button up or I don't know, maybe under a dress, maybe over a dress. I don't know. So that's, I think, the question to be determined here and how I'm going to style it. I'm just thrilled about it. So about the pattern, whoa, <laughs> the gauge. The gauge on the summer secret, summer secret crop is 17 stitches per four inches. Okay. Maybe, maybe you're not a garment knitter, and so you're like, okay, whatever, that doesn't make any, doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything to you. But just for perspective, if I'm knitting with a fingering weight yarn, I typically will get 21 to 22 stitches per four inches. So what that means is, if Jessie made suggesting 17 stitches in four inches, she has less stitches than I do, which means that her stitches are bigger, which means that the garment is like pretty open, like a loose gauge, even like the description says it's like airy breezy garment. And I, even with mine, so I'm at 21 stitches per four inches. I almost feel, cause there's negative ease on this. Like I almost feel like I could have gone a little tighter of a gauge. So all that to say is I'm making kind of a big modification to this pattern of like not purposely not doing the pattern gauge. In order for me to get 17 stitches per four inches and like the fabric, I would need to be knitting with a thick DK yarn or a worsted weight yarn, which I don't see myself wanting to do for a tank top. So yeah, I've heavily modified the, the pattern by changing the gauge, which means I will use more yarn than suggested. So I'm hoping it works out. And, but I do think for me, it's the right choice to change a gauge. Since I'm knitting at a smaller gauge, if I would have knit the size pattern that's for me, my garment would have turned out much smaller. And 
I don't want that. So I went up two sizes. I did like some math and I went with a size extra large at a much smaller gauge. So it'll probably work up to be more like a size medium. We'll see. <laughs> I'm hoping, my main thing here is I'm hoping I have enough yarn. And because most of the sizes in this pattern did take just one skinny yarn, I'm hoping it'll be okay. So if I get the whole garment and I run out of yarn, I'll cross that bridge when I get there about how I'm going to handle that. I might need to rip the whole thing out. I might need a cavalry and like look for more yarn, but for now I'm just going to hope it works out. <laughs> Okay, next I'm gonna talk dream knitting. I have three projects that I've been thinking about and dreaming about as I'm knitting all my other whips. Let me know if you're like that. Like when you're knitting your current thing, are you thinking about other things? I feel like I'm present within my knitting, enjoying the process for sure, but I'm also always thinking about like what's next. Like what am I gonna cast on next? <laughs> for the Boucle Buddies Cozy Make Along. My intent at the inauguration of, at the inaugural idea of the Boucle Make Along was this yarn to make a cozy classic raglan with ruffles. This is from Junk Yarn, the colorway Penelope. I wound it up. This was the, the inspo behind the Make Along, and then I've then focus on the belt bag and on my small, which is awesome. But I still want to make this. And so I told myself if I finish anything, the belt bag, the tank top, the if I finish anything, but the thing is I need to finish something because I have so many things going. If I finish anything, I can cast this on. So this is sitting at my desk, ready to go, thinking about it. It's going to be a really cool, a really cool, boucle sweater, a cozy classic raglan plus ruffles. Okay. I've been knitting lots of green. My heirloom cardigan has green because Chelsea Yarns Advent had green it. My small is color lime. I'm knitting this like laser tag neon green tank top. So I'm knitting all these greens and I'm loving it. But what it's making me dream about is this green yarn I bought this winter when I was in Illinois. And I went to I went to the yarn store in Freeport, Wall of Yarn, and they have lots of Rama because they also are the suppliers for North America for Rama yarn. And I bought one, two, three, four, five, five skeins of this Kelly Green to make a slipover. And every time I'm knitting my greens, like whether it's the small or the tank top, I'm thinking about that Kelly green in a slipover to wear under a blazer. And I know that it's like slipover season is, is like escaping us, but I love over the summer making things to look forward to to wear in the fall. So like a slipover like that. I'm just dreaming about a slipover. I need to make a vest or a slipover, particularly when in, in green yarn. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna share all the things that I purchased at the Rosie Yarn Crawl. If you wanna know about that, you should watch my vlog about the Rosie Yarn Crawl. However, I did buy four skeins of this yarn. It's pink in DK weight. It's a very thick, uh, squishy DK from Rubies and Roses. This is the colorway Wonderland. And basically I wanted to buy yarn for Matilda to wear a sweater. So there's a sweater that I made her when she was two years old, two and a half in 2020. It's the compass sweater and it's pink with like color work on it. And she's just been wearing it nonstop like days 
and then wearing it to bed, wanting to wear it like as pajamas and loving it. And so I want to make her another sweater that she loves just as much as that. And so I showed her the rubies and roses yarn that would be at the Rosie Yarn Crawl and I had her pick out some colorways. Well, I wanted her to pick out one and she picked out four. So I used that as like my four of like, try to get one of these. And this is what I ended up picking. It's a DK weight and I have four of them to make her any kind of sweater. I asked her if she wanted a cardigan or a pullover and she wants a pullover. And so I'm dreaming about the opportunity to cast that on for her. Um, I think again, similar to rule to this is I feel like I just need one more thing off the needles, like either a pair of socks or a tank top or a sweater, something to complete. And then I will, as a treat, cast this on. And, but what? One thought I have is a sibling sweater by Laura Penrose. And that one is a striped sweater, but you could easily just make it not striped. So that's one thought I have. But if you have any DK weight suggestions for a pullover sweater, hopefully for a size eight, eight to 10, which is bigger than what she is, but that's the thought is to make the sweater bigger than what Matilda is. So if you have any DK weight pullover suggestions for Matilda, let me know. I'd love to go look at those. And I could keep going. I like, I just have this urge inside me to like make all the things. Like I just want to make all the things. <laughs> and I think that's why I have so many whips is like, I am really excited about all of them. And I am also excited about other things too. <laughs> I just want to like, I just want to make things. <laughs> anyway, do you feel that way? Let me know. <laughs>
a really cool zipper and there was just like this excitement and this exuberance. And now it's like the work's getting hard and I'm slowing down. And I really enjoy this a lot and I really want this end product, but like I'm getting tired and I'm there's things that are hard that are like a hurdle for me. And, but I can do hard things. And so I guess I, reflecting on the advice that I give my students this time of year about finishing the semester strong, finishing just as strong as you started. And I, I need that in my life towards the fanny pack and my heirloom card again. I need that kind of energy. So hopefully you're cheering for me. <laughs>to the personal section of the episode from this point forward there is no more knitting so if you're only here for the knitting thanks so much for being here I, there is like a little tangent that's a little bit knitting related in my reading but primarily no more knitting just personal life so i like to start my personal life section by talking about what i've read since i last recorded and I have my notes here so I can remember because <laughs> so, I've read a lot, it turns out, for me. <laughs> so I finished reading Iron Flame from Rebecca Yaros. If you're a longtime viewer, you know, like, I've been reading this for a while. Hey, the book was like 620 pages and I wasn't in a rush to finish it because the third book, the third book is not out yet. <laughs> but I finished it. It had a mind blowing ending. Like I cannot believe the ending. I reread the ending. The ending was so mind blowing that I like was like texting, calling friends about it. Like it, it's insane. And so anyway, I've started rereading that book because there's stuff that happened in the end, which I'm not gonna give spoilers away here on the YouTube channel, that I'm like, I need to go back and like look for clues in this 600 page book to like, Anyway, wild, just a wild ending. Okay. I also read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Kind of a pivot, still in fantasy land, but a pivot. <laughs> and I have read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe before. I read it when I was an undergraduate. I was a math major, but I had asked a group requested special permission to take a class called children's literature which future teachers take um i had i was not an elementary ed major i was never going to be an elementary ed teacher i did not need this class but i remember i really wanted to take this children's literature class and i had room in my schedule and the prof professor let me and i read line the lion the witch in the wardrobe for the first time in that course and so i wanted to reread it again as an adult with kind of like a more mature sense of like literature. I mean, I technically was a young adult in college, but I just, I wanted to read it again and I'm really glad I did. And I think I picked up on some symbolism of things that I just wouldn't have as, you know, a 19 year old. Okay, another hard pivot. <laughs> I read <laughs> The Vampire Knitting Club, the first book in it. So I watched on YouTube, I watched the We Share Needles podcast, which has Maddie and Kristen. And Kristen really likes the series and she's talked about it. And it seems like Maddie doesn't like the series at all. And it had me curious because it's like, I like vampires, like reading about them. I like knitting. I don't really like cozy mysteries. I was like, I'll give it a try. I read this book in one sitting. I loved it. Now, it's a murder mystery, but it's a bad murder mystery. Like if you're into cozy murder mysteries, like this is like a bad cozy murder mystery. The murder's not done well. Yeah, it's just not done well. Like the author, I'm not even sure the author knits. The knitting references aren't like the best, <laughs> but there's like knitting and there's that, it's at a knitting store. And there's this sort of like paranormal overlap of like witches and vampires and things. That's not done the best either. And then there's also an American British overlap, also not super well done. So it's interesting because there's like all these kind of things coming together and none of them are well done. <laughs> but 
but it works and it works really well. Like I loved it so much. I've checked out the second book from the library. I hope to power through that soon. Yeah, I think there's 14 books in the series. I would love it to read this entire series, but we'll see. I bet <laughs> if you follow me at Goodreads, like I'll have my information below, but like my review for it's so weird. I'm like, I love this so much. It's also a terrible book. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you, like it, like, I don't know. It's, I gave it three out of five stars. I can't gush about it, but I like, I absolutely love it a lot. Like, anyway. All right, all my books like really just are not related. <laughs> so the fourth book I read was The Light We Carry Overcoming in Uncertain Times by Michelle Obama. I think after that really light and fluffy read, I needed something a little bit more like substantial. I read Becoming by Michelle Obama and loved it. And so I've wanted to read this book since it came out and I just haven't made time to do it. And I'm so glad I did. I think I like the second book better than the first book and I loved the first book and it just, Michelle is amazing. She's inspiring, down to earth yet inspiring, honest, um, just very authentic. She talked about really hard issues in her book. I loved it so much and I'm so glad I read it. Okay, so I've read four books. I'm really proud of myself that I've made some time for some recreational reading with like work and things like that. As I mentioned, I went to the Rosa Yarn Crawl. It was really amazing. It was beautiful weather. I didn't do it as intensely as I do other years. Like I've made a vlog about the Rosa Yarn Crawl for three years, 2022, 2023, and 2024. In 2022, I went to all the stores I think I went to at least like half the stores last year. And this year I only went to three stores. I did go to Naughty Lamb twice. I, I had an amazing time though. I think out of all the years I've done it, this year was maybe my favorite. It was my first time like hanging out with people and like knitting in between stores and things like that. So that was really fun. Check out the vlog if you want. On Saturday or Sunday, one of those days, I wanted to go to Starlight Knitting Society. I would say out of, since 2015, I've been going to the Rosa Yarn Crawl and no matter what, I always go to Starlight Knitting Society. It's just such a beautiful store. I love their logo. I love their aesthetic. I just, all the things. And I didn't go this year. I, I just... I think on Saturday morning, I was just like feeling like hanging out with my family because I was leaving on Sunday to go to Quito, Ecuador, and I just didn't want to go. And so I actually got a lot of joy in not going. I talked about in my vlog, JOMO, like people talk about FOMO, the fear of missing out, but I truly that day was having JOMO, the joy of missing out, the joy of just spending time with my family and happy I didn't go. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So I took a red eye on Sunday to Quito, Ecuador. I had a, like, I call the trip turn and burn. Like I flew out to Quito. I was there for three days and then I came home. It was a work trip. And essentially the short story is I'm helping start a student teaching abroad program in Quito through my university. And so I went there for work. Now it's, I had a wonderful time in Quito. It is a very high elevation. I think about 9,000 feet in elevation. And so I did get altitude sickness. Like I wasn't used to being at that. I have an altitude and my body was like, what's going on? So that was kind of a bummer, but you know, it was fine. And I went to the equator and stood on the equator where the actual equator is, is actually like 50 meters off from like where they think the actual equator is now, but nonetheless, for the time of when they found it, like, again, and, and made like the monument for it, it's incredible technology that they were to be just 50 meters off. So yeah, so I stood on the equator. I ate amazing fruit in Quito. It was like some of the fruits that are in Ecuador, like we don't have here in the United States, in North America. And it was just, 
delicious. I like think the fruits and the juice were like my number one favorite thing about visiting <laughs> Ecuador. Yeah, so, oh, I hate, drink lots and lots of coffee, coffee several times a day, chocolate. I made sure to go to the grocery store and buy some dark chocolate to bring home. So that was really fun. I went to the Basilica, like a church, um, and on my way, I saw a yarn store. I didn't buy any yarn. I actually really didn't buy many souvenirs at all. I was really focused on like packing light, traveling light, and doing my work. So there wasn't a lot of shopping. I did buy a really cute little llama for Matilda, and she's been like playing with it every day. And she's, she calls it llama, because that's how you say llama in Spanish. While I was gone, of course, Matilda got really sick. Like, it's like, I don't know, like just what happens to moms, I feel like. So I leave on a work trip and then Matilda gets sick and she hasn't taken a single sick day at school once this school year, cause she's been really healthy. And like, this just knocked her out. She was sick Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. She missed an entire week of school. I get back from keto and she's on the uphill mend. And so my husband Kyle had to like single parent that by himself, poor guy. And then I get back and Matilda had a swim meet, which was one of my reasons for flying back like as quickly as I did. And, and she was feeling better, like no fever, like doing well. And she said she wanted to do her swim meet. So we let her do her swim meet, but it was really rough and she just wasn't fully recovered. And so we got back home, she slept for four hours. The next day, of course, she had a birthday party that was a rock climbing birthday party. So lots of activity. So, but she's feeling well, so we're like, okay, we'll take her. And then she naps the entire way there. So anyway, this is her first week back at school and she's doing well, everybody's doing well, but I just feel bad that she was sick for a week and but when I returned back from keto, the weather here was actually nicer than keto. It was in the 70s, like warm, sunny, like it felt like summer and it just has me like so excited about spring knitting and it was making me notice that my knitting is very green and bright and it has me really excited for summer. And so I don't know, I'm just like really excited to think about, I think that's the only reason why I'm like thinking about all the dream knitting is like this idea of like, summer having more of a relaxed schedule like more downtime to do things and so yeah i'm really excited for spring and summer let me know if you have any exciting plans or what you're excited for for spring and summer i'm just excited for a little bit more freedom in schedule and more time to knit maybe <laughs> anyway i hope you have a great week and i'll talk to you soon thanks for watching bye